Okay, we are on page 98. And we're taking a look at uh, probability tables. I uh, use the table to find the probability of a person's total charges. That is the probability that a person's charges, I think they spell that wrong, are between this and this. What is the probability that the person's charges are less than this? So we take a look carefully at the table. So we look at this in our table, which is right here. And the probability of it would be 21%. This is the decimal form that it would be less than a thousand dollars. So a thousand dollars is here. So less than that will be the sum of these three. And if you add them up, it comes to 0 0.66. And hopefully you're trying these on your own and then using this as sort of a backup. So for example, two charges this and then later more than this. So looking at this one between this and this this is the probability there. And for this uh, next one, more than 2,000. So 2,000, you would add these three up. And then this would add up to 0. Point five seven so here several fr friends went fishing they caught this many fish determine the empirical probability now empirical is depending on the data that you collect so we say they collected 78 fish altogether, what's the probability the next fish caught will be a flounder? Well, it's going to be out of 78, flounder is 8. We want to simplify the ratio. We can take a 2 out of there and take a 2 out of there and then that is the answer. So something relatively easy, giving you some hands-on use of these uh, tables. Now on page 99, we're going to take a look at the roulette wheel again. We, we did this in the textbook lecture, but we want to get some parameters of what's going on here. And I like this nice colored view of it. So the coupier, the fellow that uh, gets the thing going, the wheel goes in one way and then he throws the ball the other way and then you're waiting for it to land somewhere in a little notch and then depending upon where it lands and the bet you've made, it's kind of a game of chance. But what are the chances if it's an honest game? Well, first of all, there are 36 numbers. So 36 numbers. And then there are two where there's a zero in one and a double zero in the other. 
So a total then of 38 slots. Now, of these 36, 18 are red and 18 are black. And of the 36, you can imagine, 18 are also even numbers, and 18 are odd. And then we have these two that are not counted as either even or odd. So this, I think, pretty much describes the roulette wheel. Now with that in mind, let's look at some uh, questions here. And I should add that the zero and double zero are painted green. So there's the zero and somewhere there's a double zero there. That is also green. Well, I can find the single zero here, but I've looked a couple of times. I don't see the other zero. And there's the ball down here right there. So let's work on these anyway and assume that there is one. I've seen them on other wheels. Find the probability of the marble, this marble, landing on a green. So again on the green would be the double zero and the zero. So there would be two out of 38 slots for that. And on an even slot, and we said they were 18 of those of the 36 numbers are even and that's out of 38 also so that gives you 20 out of 38 which can be simplified to 10 out of 19 for letter B find the probability of a marble landing on a double zero well there's one of those out of 38 and a red slot well they were 18 that were red out of 38 that we're going to add together so we get 19 out of 38 and this is you can take a 19 out of each of those actually you get one half all right for letter C the probability now of winning given the dozen bet where there are 12 numbers here whichever they are and that would be 12 out of 38, which is 6 out of 19. And the probability of winning with the given five number bet, once again, we have five numbers. They could be any five numbers, actually. So that would be five out of 38. So again, knowing the makeup of the wheel and then putting your probability together.